Stuart McPhee here and uh, I'm really, really honoured and uh, privileged to be accompanied by Mark Cook, uh, for those who don't know, one of the market wizards profiled in uh, one of Jack Schwager's book, which is fantastic. We are in Australia, even though Mark's American and uh, he's been busily uh, preparing a lot of things and presenting to a lot of people, thousands of people in Australia over the last week. And I know you're here for another few days, Mark. So, And I know you're very busy, so thank you very much for taking the time um, to just talk with me for five, ten minutes. Um, just for those who don't know, which uh, is probably just two or three of you, Mark began trading a long time ago, back in 1977. And during your journey, I guess, of discovering what worked and what didn't, he actually developed his own indicator, which, as you said the other night, you humbly named uh, after, after yourself, myself. right? <laughs> uh, the Cook Cumulative Tick Indicator. Mm -hmm. um, uh, probably the, your biggest claim, I guess, the really thing that catapulted you into the trading world in everyone's eyes was winning the 1992 United States Investment Championship with a return of 563.8%. Mm -hmm. The following year you did it again, 322%. You must have had a pretty terrible year that year. You only yeah, had it was, 322%. It was a, it was a down year. Whew, okay, <laughs> I think a lot of us would like to have down years yeah, like that. There you go. Uh, look, because of all these and uh, you know, certainly the performance and the championships really catapulted you and because of that, you know, during that time you've been in so many publications and magazines and journals and been listened to by a lot of people around the world and, and probably the icing on the cake was being approached by Jack Schwager who's very well known for his Market Wizards books and he said, I want you in my third book. He got you in the book and, uh, and that was terrific. So uh, look, it's absolutely my pleasure to, to know you and I've met you previously and to see you now in my own country here in Australia. I just had a few questions that I hope you could help uh, okay. uh, people with. Um, the first one, I guess, it's what we all tackle when we first start. Um, trading, did you start for the money? Is that the reason why you saw trading as an opportunity? Was it the money or was it something else that drove you to starting? Yeah, well, that's, that's a good question, Stuart. I, I'm, I'm sure it was the money that enticed me to try it. Right. And then I think once I was in it, there, there was more than just the money to it. Mm. Um, I think it's a great challenge. Um, it, it's an adrenaline rush, and I always okay. say I'm an yeah. adrenaline junkie. Okay. <laughs> so uh, uh, I think initially, uh, when I looked at the look back on it, it, it was an obsession mm. and an addiction and all that. Wow. So, but addiction has a bad connotation. So you draw, you were really drawn into this as a real challenge. I thought I found it. I even knew in the early days when I lost money, right. was, this was for me. Wow. So I liked that. But yeah, yeah, of course the money, and I had no idea how much money could be made. I didn't know. I definitely didn't know how much money could be lost. Yes. So mm. you know, you look at it, but I, I, I think it, I think it's for everybody really mm. in, in varying. Uh, Degrees, you know how much time they have. Yeah, I, I heard you speak the other night. I think you made an interesting comment. You thought this was going to be the next biggest growth occupation, if you can call it that, mm -hmm. in the next say 10, 15 yeah. years. You think this is really going to take off, I, and I think a lot of people are going yeah. to take to this. I think a lot of people, and I'm sure a lot of your clients too, are looking at this. It, it, the, it's growth exponentially, hmm. which means that I, I think there's going to be not only a lot more traders, but there's going to be a lot more traders of what I call influence, which is, you know, right uh, now... Influence on actual market yeah, itself and what right, it does. Right. Mm, okay. So you got a widespread uh, uh, type of person that's going to come into this hmm. and really can attract from every type of field, background, hmm. uh, capital, hmm. age, hmm. education. Hmm. Yep. So background, I, I upbringing, yeah, all yeah, those yeah, things. All that, so. uh, you know, it's, I think one of the most ironic things about money is we, or the trading and the money, is we focus on the money because that's why we are drawn into right. trading for most right. of us. Yet that's the thing that makes us become unstuck right. because we worry about money so right. much and we focus right. on it. We don't want to cut losses and mm -hmm. cut losing trades. So it's a bit of a kick that we are drawn in because of the money, yet that's the one thing right. that right. causes us to become unstuck. Right. As Paul Tudor Jones said in the first book, don't focus on making money, focus on protecting what you have. So mm -hmm. that's a real shift that mm -hmm. we're probably not aware of when we right. start about, um, yeah. okay, it's very interesting. Well, the other night I heard you speak and uh, you said something which really hit home with me. You talked about early on you were trading with some of your perhaps relatives or friends or your mother's mm -hmm. money and you lost a lot of it. Right. And there was an interesting thing that happened between yourself and your mom that had a defining yeah. Uh, effect on you. Would you mind just yeah. explaining well, that? Well, my mother, she lost $100,000 that I was directly responsible for. And when we talked about it, and she asked how much money I had lost, mm. and I had lost $500,000 at that particular time. And so I, I looked at it, and she gave me words of inspiration instead of words of condemnation, which right. I think needs to go forward. Mm. And she asked how soon I thought I could get the money back, which I didn't think I was ever going to get back. 
And because of that, I had uh, installed in me an element of hope, so she put that. But also put it in perspective, too, the next thing that she said to me, you know, when you called me and you wanted to talk to me and you sounded like dire straits, she goes, I thought it was something really bad, like you had cancer. She said, losing money, you can get back. Mm -hmm. You're healthy, you can't. Mm -hmm. And it really put things into perspective of what it is, and it accords money really low on the total pool. Yes. Mm -hmm. So... Um, do you think if she had not have said that, what she said about, okay, so when are you going to make it back or how long will it take you to make it back? Do you think you were going down the path of, geez, this is a hard hit. Mm. I don't think I can probably keep going or well, I'm really I'm, going to struggle a little bit. I'm sure. She's always been an inspiration to me. She knows what to say at the right time. Okay. I don't know if she believed in that, but what she said, <laughs> but it she obviously made me worked. do it. <laughs> obviously worked then. Well, that's great. Okay. Yeah. So that was probably one of the most defining moments. Oh, yes, and the definitely. other thing you said about the perspective, you know, we... I say to a lot of people, uh, you know, we have perhaps a a few losing trades in a row. We may end up losing a thousand bucks over a week, which isn't a huge amount of money. But if it's done over three losing trades, you think it's not for you. This is a terrible run. You know, I say to people, if you have your health and your home and all these other things, and and both of us live in great countries, Mm -hmm. um, if losing a thousand bucks is the worst thing that's going to happen to you this week, Life's pretty good. That's you know, right. You know, no, is that it? Is that I the agree. worst thing that can happen? And I, I think perspective mm-hmm. is something we really right. don't, uh, consider at all. Uh, a trading plan, is it overrated or do you need one? No, I think it's very much underrated because mm. the, the trading plan, when I won that 1992 U.S. Investing Championship in 91, I composed my first structured complete plan. Mm. And I really attribute uh, winning the 1992 to the plan that I composed going into that. And, and when I teach people in the mentoring and instruction, speaking, or whatever, I always allude to that because I guarantee whomever attempts it, even if they don't complete it and it's not as accurate or as detailed as it should be, mm. it will improve your trading, I think. Well, There's, no there you question. Go. There's gold right there. That yeah. Plans are not overrated oh, yeah. at all. They, no, you absolutely, not at all. Uh, right. and it, does it, I think it comes down to that counterintuitive thing. You know, everything right. we need to do is counterintuitive. Right. We don't realize that. But mm. if you don't realize that and you don't have a plan, you'll constantly make decisions intuitively, right. won't you? Right. So I guess that plan is the thing that provides you the mm-hmm. the guidance, I guess, to right. forget about the intuitive thing, actually just right. follow the plan. Right. Uh, exactly so, right. Okay, well, that's good to hear because I like to think I push the idea of a trading plan and mm-hmm. across, and I always say about the three M's, the mindset, the money, and the method, and uh, right. which one of those is more important, I guess you could argue, for a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, certainly, obviously, managing your money is important and everything else. Um, do you think trading... A lot of people don't uh, meet their expectations with trading. Is trading as difficult as a lot of people think it is? Is trading difficult, I guess, or is it easy? I think that's a good question, Stuart. Again, you you have to do a relativity on how tough it is. I do think it's very difficult, Mm. but I think it's very rewarding. Mm. So anything that's very rewarding probably needs to be difficult. If it was too easy, you wouldn't feel it was as rewarding. So, Mm. uh, but uh, monetarily, I think the upside potential for it is astonishing Mm. in the limitation that people have is their mind, not their pocketbook, basically, (laughs) because to be honest with you, the amount of money I've made over my 32 years has astonished me mm. because I never thought I'd ever make that much money over that period of time. And you just think is you probably don't do it for the money anymore, do you? Oh, the trading, no. it's just no, really routine, don't. it's process, it's something it's you enjoy. It's become part of me. It's become part of me, Stuart. And, and because of that, I do it for the fun and go from there. But, but you need really be hungry to keep an edge. And perhaps I don't have that as much as I once did. Hmm. But someone that's your age, for example, I started my trading company when I was 34 years of age. Mm. And I had goals of what I needed to attain. Mm. And I exceeded all the goals. But I was hungry back then. I, hmm. I needed to make X amount because of my family and hmm. other obligations and things like that. Not to say I'm coasting now because, because I enjoy the trading. Okay. It, it, it's, it's fun to me. It, it's fulfilling to me. It's completed me. But do I have to do it each and every day? No. But I want to do it each and every day? Yes. Yeah, because you, yeah, you absolutely love to. Yeah. Right, right. That's terrific. I, unfortunately, I think there's a lot of people in this world who don't do what they want to do. No. So far as enjoy exactly and go to right. work every day and actually don't enjoy mm-hmm. it. And I think mm-hmm. trading provides uh, all those things about, you know, the, the working for yourself and from right. the home and flexible right. hours and no boss and all those things. And I guess that coming with the money, you think, yeah. wow, this is just the perfect yeah. occupation. Why didn't I do this earlier oh, or, right. or take it on and, yeah. and everything else? 
Um, well, I, I have a saying too, Stuart, that I think a lot of people can look at in regard to training. If you can find a job that you love to do, you'll never work a day in your life. <laughs> and that's what trading is. I mean, mm. I love to do it. I mean, mm. it's like a hobby. It's it's like fun. It's like pleasure or whatever. And get paid for it. Yes. So how can you beat that and get paid very handsomely mm. for it? So that's the thing. But I don't want to underestimate uh, or underemphasize that the seriousness of it, too. You have to go in there with a plan. You have to go in there with a habitual routine. You have to go in there with the desire. You have to go in there with passion. And you have to be tough. Mm. So. Okay. Character attributes of successful traders, I often talk about it. Is discipline overrated? Everyone talks about discipline. It's almost cliche when it comes to trading. But you know, you'd have to think. You know, I'm not, I, don't, I don't want to put words in your mouth, yeah, but I think tra- yeah. discipline is not overrated at all. Yeah. Discipline is something that affects different people in different ways. And what I found is one person might think they're undisciplined, whereas another pe- person thinks they're very disciplined. And when you compare the two, the one that thinks they're undisciplined is more disciplined than the one that thinks they're disciplined. Wow. Is that because their see, standards are higher or something? Yeah, their that's standards right. are higher. You know, what you find with people, Stuart, I think a lot of times, and I'm sure you've seen this too, a person can be very disciplined in one environment, in, in one situation, and for a very finite period of time. Hmm. Another person is, is generally more disciplined, but maybe for that very focused integral of time, the other one is more disciplined. I'm a case of that. I don't consider myself a disciplined person at all in, in my life and the way I've done, because I'm very impulsive. I'm adrenaline junkie or whatever. But when I trade, mm. every T is crossed and every dies dotted, all details are paid attention to. Mm. So I think that's a mindset that accomplishes. It doesn't have to be as much quantitative as what people think that I'm going to re- regiment it to be out here at this point or this point or only X amount of money and stuff like that. It's more the mindset of I'm protecting my assets. I'm protecting my assets. Mm. And that's the number one focus of what I do. Mm. The profits take care of themselves. The losses have to be governed. Mm. Now, if that's discipline, that's what I say. But, mm. you know, discipline is not that every day I have to have a black pen and a blue pen and a yellow pen or whatever and I have to sit a certain way when I'm trading and I have to read the newspaper at the same time. Yeah. Well, those, yeah. those are more quirks than anything yes, else. Yes. But the other side of the thing is that, all right, given this situation, I will do this type of reaction to it every time mm. because I know the probabilities are that mm. it'll work out. Not mm. to say one won't work because mm. one won't work at some time. Then you have to employ the discipline mm. knowing that you're bad and get out of the thing. But uh, mm. yeah, discipline is, is a very integral part, but the application of it and the definition, I think, is widespread. Mm. Mm. So, I mean, we could list another 20 character attributes, and you've already yeah. mentioned that you've mentioned passion before yeah. and right. desire and focus and patience mm. and confidence yeah. and we could keep rattling them all off but I think personally I mean I think discipline just stands at the top right. because right. discipline is self-control and how can you have some of those other attributes if you don't have some measure right. of self-control right. over yourself but right. uh, anyway I won't, uh, yeah. won't go on any more about the attributes I think it all comes from just I think a deep desire within to heighten and, and improve those attributes and mm-hmm. become more patient and no, disciplined and everything else and does the solitary nature of trading bother you like have you ever come from an environment where you're yeah. part of a great team and because I think that's something it that also hits people of right. where's all those people right. I used to have a coffee right. with at morning right. tea or that they're not there anymore do you think that it bothers me a lot okay. now, I think a lot is your personality what you are mm. some of the traders that I've mentored are very reclusive in nature mm. uh, one of my good friends is Marty Swartz yes, yes. And, and Marty is very reclusive mm. he doesn't like to be around people Wouldn't at all bother him in at fact all. <laughs> he'll say you know I want to trade in solitarity, that's when he does the best thing. Hmm. Now, he likes to talk on the phone, you know, or whatever, but he talks on the phone at his own pleasure. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. But uh, <laughs> personally with me, I need noise. I need interaction with people, and that was one thing that I did not like, and I still don't like hmm. about it. Now, fortunately, now I have some traders that are in my office with yes, me. Yes. We're talking about the market. I, I think that commiserating is a, is a healthy thing. Hmm. And uh, but then when it's the time to focus too, it's quiet and we're watching things and we're being very intent in that regard. But mm. uh, that is a problem, I, I mm. think, with a lot of people. If you're a gregarious, outgoing person, you know, and all of a sudden you're stuck in a trading room with no interaction with people, then your mind can do bad things. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Look, I, I know your background. You were, in, you know, a big sport player and playing basketball. I know you have a big interest in basketball. And that's all about team and coaching mm-hmm. and all right. that sort of stuff. And 
I was in a, one of Australia's great teams in the Australian mm. Army and as an officer and camaraderie and teamwork. And I, I personally have felt that, right. I found that very difficult right, to sure. get used to yeah. the quiet of my own office and not having anyone around. And yeah. uh, I, I'm sure it affects uh, certain people in bad yeah. ways, as yeah. you said, not yeah. having that. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, Mark, I don't want to take up too much more of your time because I know your time is very busy. I'll ask you a couple more if I may. Sure. Um, Look, we can beat ourselves up about losses and uh, sometimes those losses get a bit bigger than we want them to get and they can affect us in different ways. Do you, if you have a really good winning streak, may not be over a couple of hours or a day, maybe over a week or something, do you reward yourself? Do you recognise the fact that, you know what, that last week, mm -hmm. that was something special, that was just something mm -hmm. out of the box. Do you recognise that in any way, mm -hmm. shape or form? Do you reward yourself in any way? Oh yeah, definitely do, Stuart. And I think it has to be something that's uh, quantitative, and, and also uh, has its quality to it as I gauge it and everything. In other words, for example, you know, if you want to go on a certain vacation, yes, right, you yes. make X amount of dollars, which <laughs> yeah. is the quantifying it, yes, and then yeah. you reward yourself by doing it, because if you don't, you sit there or whatever, then you're going to become a, a workaholic, so to speak. So that, I think that's what you look at. So yeah, it's very important. Oh, that's overall. good, okay. Whew, because I believe that as well. And I know people say, oh no, it's just part of trading reward. Yeah. And I think we do beat ourselves up oh, on yeah. losses. I think why not reward yeah. ourselves yeah. And, and the vacation or the, the family dinner or mm -hmm. the new driver for your golf set or something. Yeah. I, I do believe in, I think it reinforces yeah. the positive and why we're doing it. And mm -hmm. uh, we don't do it all, we don't do it all the time. But uh, okay, I guess uh, one final question, if I may, is uh, you've had so many years of experience and you've seen so many different things. If you were to somehow jump in a, uh, a Back to the Future car and go all the way back to 77, what would be the single biggest thing that you would change completely now knowing what you know? Is there something that stands out as, I would do this right. day, from day one, as yeah. opposed to going through all those years and learning that? Well, that, that's a very good question. I think I just got one answer okay. that fits it, and it's bothered me for a long time, and I'm a little bit bitter about it, oh. in that back when I started, which was 1977, yes. there wasn't enough education available. There were, I searched diligently to find a mentor. Hmm. I find somebody that had been through some hard knocks okay. and, and, and had some scars and stuff, hmm. something that was an older gentleman or lady or whatever. I could not find anybody. Hmm. And, my losses and my anger that I had, my pain I endured and all that is if I would have had somebody, because I would have listened to them. Hmm. And, and I just want to tell people out there, whatever, find somebody that's been through hmm. some hard knocks and whatever, and got some scars and listen to them. Hmm. Because if you don't, you're going to have to live through that yourself. Hmm. And I think every person needs to have a few scratches and abrasions and bruises yeah, and things no. like that, yeah. but they don't yeah. have to get crushed. No. <laughs> No. So, I, but I, I could not. The first five years, I didn't make money at all, and I look back on it. Everything I learned, I learned the hard way. Mm. It does intensify, you know, your staying power as far as your maintenance and your mind because it's imprinted. You got hit. Maybe somebody else that says something to you because you have an experience that doesn't have the impact. Mm. But you still need to listen in regard to that. Mm. So I would encourage any young trader who's got all the other attributes for it or whatever to mm. find somebody that's similar to them that has been through it, that's maybe a decade or two years, yeah. two decades older than them yes. or has a much more experience or yes. whatever. Yeah. And by gosh, just drain the brain. You know, just to finish, you mentioned the other night uh, reminiscences of a stock operator, Jesse Livermore. And uh, I remember in that book it said, hey, you've got to, you know, you'll win a lot, but then you'll lose a lot. And only through that losing do you learn a lot. And, it's, and it said something along the lines of every trader will go through that learning right. stage. And I thought to myself right then, I don't want to do that <laughs> because I'm, I'm here to make money. Yeah. I don't want to go through a really, but I did go through. And when the NASDAQ crashed in early 2001, I lost a ridiculous amount of money. And it was only then that I thought, okay, yeah. I, I actually need to change some things yeah. here. So yeah. I did go through that, even though I don't want to. Maybe you do have to, maybe you don't. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. But but um, anyway, look, uh, Mark, I cannot thank you enough. Thank uh, you I know, your, I know your schedule is very, very tight here in, in Australia. It's great. I'm, I'm great. I'm really happy to see you in, in my country yeah. for the first time. I hope you had a great time. And I know you're here for a few more days. It's a beautiful you to... country. I just appreciate that, Stuart. And I, I mean, know it's a long way to, yeah, to fly. Yeah. <laughs> I know you've been to the States and yes, everything, yeah. but Australia is just equally nice. And oh, great. It's just phenomenal here, and I thank appreciate you. the time to chat with you. Well, I appreciate your time. I know your time's busy, so thank, thanks very much. And I hope uh, you guys have been able to learn something from that from uh, one of the absolute masters in trading. So thanks very well, thank much, Thank you Mark. very much. I, I appreciate, appreciate it. it. Thank you. Thank sir. you. Take care. Mm -hmm.